Hello guys, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net, improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher, and welcome to your lesson on Solar, the Miles Davis song. So this one is very similar to the two things I've done on this YouTube channel on uh, the Bird Blues, the Freight Train uh, Parker Blues in A-flat, and the B-flat Rhythm Change. So the lesson has a long blog post associated, and step by step what we'll do is, well, I'll give you some strategies for comping, you know, simple comping, and then top string comping, and then some strategies on, on improvising, but not just, I'm not gonna give you licks and things to play, I'm gonna show you how you can look at the chords and maybe simplify them and have some strategies on how to, you know, make decent solos by having um, guidelines for your mindsets uh, in terms of looking at the chord progression, all right? So let's get going with this. Okay, welcome to your Solar lesson. Once again, there, are, there is a blog post associated with this where you can download a PDF with all the exercises. Everything I'm about to play is in that blog post. Um, so Solar is a very interesting tune. It was written by Miles Davis in, I guess, 1950s, late 50s, early 60s. The first recording it appeared on is the All-Star, Miles Davis All-Star, and our other famous recordings that I, I'm particularly fond of, especially the Bill Evans recording, Sunday at the Village Vanguard. There's the Brad Meldow more recent, like early 2000, and the Pat Metheny, uh, Roy Haynes, Dave Holland trio. So those three are really, really good reference. They play, especially the modern versions, they play them at blazing speed. And so that's a history of a song. And why it, this song is important is, I think of it like a blues with crooked teeth a little bit. It's like a C minor blues, but then it goes to a four major, and the turnaround is sort of interesting and telescoping in nature. So what I'm going to do now, so why, why is this tune important? You should learn it because any jam session in North America, you could walk in and go, eh, let's play solar and C minor, and people, yeah, you know, swinging, and it's just straight in the pocket, it's a 12 bar form. What I'm gonna do now is share my screen with you so you can actually see the form, and we're gonna talk about how chords relate to one another and what the progression's about. All right, so let's do this. All right, guys, so here's my screen on the form of Solar. So most likely this is going to be your first introduction to the tune. If someone flips open an, an old fake book, it's like, okay, this is Solar. And you know, what's, what's happening with this? It starts with a C minor, it doesn't say seven, it doesn't say anything. And then the form is sort of skewed. You can count it and you can go, well, this is a 12 bar. So uh, what's interesting with that? Number one, the melody is not representative because every time someone plays it, it's going to be different, so don't let the rhythms and all this notation fool you into thinking you have to learn this verb verbatim. So I'm going to jump around and show you another uh, two other things I have on, on my screen. So number one, I don't recommend you use this one to learn the song for simply for formatting reason. I'll show you. This is what I have on the website. I have this up. You know, it's not my tune, but I've tabbed it uh, to make it simpler to learn. So here we are. You have four, sorry, my, my mouse is very, very loud on the on the stable, I know. So this, the C minor section lasts four bars, the F major lasts four bars, and E flat four bars. So it's much clearer to go four, 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 than to go three, 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 because this, this does not represent the sound of the song at all. This does. Uh, also, before we dig into the chords, I'm gonna show you one thing. Here, so this is my handwritten transcription. You can find this on the website as well, on the transcription ar transcription archive. Uh, this is the first, uh, I guess, four choruses of Miles Davis's solo on his All Star recording. Uh, no tabs. I was I was young and foolish, but uh, this is me. Uh, I've written this down a while back, maybe five or six years back. So let's talk about the chords. Number one, I want you to be sure if you take only one thing from this lesson, you should know that. The first chord is not a C minor 7 chord. It's not a Dorian soft sounding chord. I'm going to grab the guitar here. It's not this. It's not this either. It's way too soft. The sound of this tune is... So you could call it either C minor major 7, or some people still play um, C minor 6, which would sound like this. They're equivalents because these two are what we could call tonic minor sounds. So if you take only one thing from this lesson, it's really the form starts with a C minor major 7 and not a C minor 7, all right? And then the other thing I want to point your attention to before we, we dig into the playing is <clears throat> don't notice how 
like blues, it goes from one here to four. The four chord is F, uh, but instead of being an F minor, like you'd get a minor blues or an F dominant, it's actually an F major. So right before the F major, we have a two, five, two F, which totally makes sense. It's two, five, a four. And then the trickiest part of this song goes and uh, in bar nine here. And of course you have a two, five before that bar nine, but this is the relative major to C minor. It's E flat. And then it goes to D flat, which is just a whole tone down, and then minor two, five back to C. If you want to summarize a tune in words very quickly, this tune would be C minor-ish, F major-ish, E flat major, D flat major. So it's actually one minor key and three major keys that are a whole step apart. That's really what the interesting part is about this. So just remember, and the lines and stuff we'll be discussing in, in the next few minutes of this video, I'm going to rely extensively on numbering the bars, tell you, oh, this is bar four, this is bar five, this is bar six. So be sure to maybe print this guy out to have it handy so you really know where we are in the form. And please be sure to conceptualize of the form as these four main key centers. I repeat, C minor, and F major, E flat major, and D flat major. All right, so back to the playing now. Hello and welcome back. So we're going to start playing now for the solar lesson. The first step, as I do in every lesson, is to uh, learn the melody. But since I like not being sued, and I've seen a lot of creators on YouTube now having problems with copyright issues, uh, Miles Levis is a pr pretty famous guy too, so I don't want to get involved. Uh, I will tell you this, grab a good recording, grab the, the Miles Davis or grab uh, even the uh, Bill Evans recording, uh, Sunday at the Village Vanguard, and that's a really good model to model the melody, or grab a fake book and try to do your best. <clears throat> Sorry, remember, you will learn the melody and you will sense that a lot of jazz players, they just toy, they toy around it, they tinker with it, they just play it out of time and they syncopate it, so it's totally fine, so long as you sort of know what's happening, especially in the last bar or last two bars, make sure you nail that and the rest should be easy. So let's move on to the next section. All right, for the next section of this video, what I want to do on Solar is show you some basic chord shapes that you can comp on and I'm, I'm going to be demonstrating this. So please refer to the blog to see exactly which shapes, chord shapes I'm using. Uh, be wary though that I will be modifying them. I will be playing rhythms and I'll be adding and removing some notes in the chords. However, what you have on the blog post is a good stencil. So the tempo is 120 and I'm going to be playing two courses on Solar, just comping. A uh, one, two, go three, four. Alright, in this section of the video lesson, what we're, we're going to do is start improvising on Solar from key centers templates, as I mentioned earlier in the video, where we're only going to consider changing in between keys, C minor, F, E flat, major, and so C minor, F major, E flat major, and D flat major. So three major keys that are a whole step apart, uh, if you look at them as bar chords, so F, E flat, and D flat, as well as the C minor. So the point is, this is a little bit of a cheat, and this is what I've done with uh, the other lessons in that style where we run through a form. It's like, you cannot consider every chord change when you're just getting acquainted with it. So what we're gonna do, I'll give you a scales model template that's actually a fun little exercise that you can practice. It lasts two courses, and it gives you scales for C minor, F major, E flat major, and D flat major. And then after that, I'm gonna stop the video, and we're gonna do some call and response. So I love doing this in my video lessons, if you've been following me, there's a lot of this on YouTube where I play a little bit and then I let you improvise to sort of not trying to copy, but trying to get inspired. So I love this step because it's totally wrong. Because if you look at your form, we're not going to cover the G minor chord C7, we're not going to cover F minor 7, B flat 7, etc. 
we're not going to talk about the two fives. We're just going to talk about the big pillars. But at least it can put your mind in this right spot for improvising. So let's start with the scale templates, which you can find on the blog post. Solar key center scales. That was C minor. The F bebop. to E flat major. Let's do it. Up and down. D flat major. G altered. Watch out. Then F. E flat major again. Up and down. Good job. Now let's improvise with that stuff. All right, let's take turns improvising with that stuff. So what I'm gonna do is play a course, let you play a course, and the tempo is uh, 120. And the point here is don't worry too much about catching this G minor, C7, etc. Just worry about catching the big C minor, play a little idea, rest, play a little idea on F major, rest. Same thing with E flat, same thing with D flat. And um, you're, you're, now you're starting to notice the telescoping nature of the song. So I'm starting the backing track. Let's do this. I'm starting. Improv in C minor. Going to F. That was F major. Now E flat. D flat. Your turn. C minor. The F major. E flat. Go. D flat. G altered. My turn. C minor. Go to F major. Now go to E flat major. And good job. All right, moving on now in this lesson on solar, what we want to do next is improvise using the dominant. So you'll notice in the previous step, uh, what I've done is improvise actually with C melodic minor scale. That's a refresher for you guys. If you need any help with this, you can look up the blog. So C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B, C. So it's the same as the C major scale, except there's an E flat, so there's a flat three in there. So I've used C melodic minor and then F major and then E flat major and D flat major, plain, not Lydian, not crazy, just very plain scales and not Dorian either. So in this next step, we're going to look at dominant chords and how we can land on these important milestones. So instead of thinking of C minor and then waiting for the F7, uh, F major to happen, we're going to disregard the C minor and focus all of our attention in bars three and four, where does this two five? So we're going to disregard the two and just think of the five go, all right, C7, is that dominant and it's leading us to F. So let's focus on that. So same as the previous step, what I've done is I've, I've devised this little fun uh, exercise that's like a template for your scale. It lasts two courses, then two courses, and then I'm gonna stop it. Then we're gonna trade courses where you will, once again, just disregard part of the form and just focus on making these dominant happen in bars uh, four, in bars, uh, bars four, eight, 10, uh, 11 and 12 actually, um, is that right? Anyways, on the <laughs> C7, B flat seven, A flat seven, and G7. So let's get going with the sca uh, scale templates Solar right now. scale templates for the dominance. So that's a C minor, right? 
C7. That's F major. B flat 7. Now watch out. A little lick. That's a third of F major. To B flat 7. Same lick. To G7 finally. And you're done. Good job. Now let's improvise with that stuff. So let's do trading of improv once again, as we've done last time, except this time I want you, well, you're gonna hear me do it. I'm gonna sort of ignore the C minor, and then I'm gonna start improvising on the C7 and try to land on the F. And once again, I'm gonna sort of ignore the F major in, in and of itself. I'm gonna force myself to play on that B flat seven to land on this E flat and do the same to land on this D flat. So it's sort of, um, we're doing the film negative of what we've done uh, in the last step, actually, we're just focusing on the dominance. And of course, we're gonna put all of this together later. So I have four choruses on my backing track. So one me, one you, one me, one you at 120. And let's get going. Dominant chords improv. So C minor here. Going to play on C7. That's F. Play on B flat. That's E flat. That's D flat. G. Your turn. C7. Flat on F. B flat seven. E flat major. Your A flat seven. My turn again. Take a little break. Landed safely. Good. Landed safely again. Your turn. C7. B flat 7. Good job. All right, good job on improvising. So, so far what we've covered is using the key centers, so namely C minor, etc., da, 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 and then the dominant chords. So as you would put all of this together, uh, you would have a complete picture of solar. Uh, this is not a very complicated form, it's just chords come by really fast. So before we sort of put, put all of this together and improvise once again, like, you know, freely uh, without me thinking of, oh, nail this chord. I, I always sound really bad when I do this, when I try to teach you guys. I'm like, yeah, do this, and then I can't do it. It's just, <laughs> anyways. So, um, what I've done a little bit in the previous improv and I wanted to touch on is I have, uh, without trying, I've altered the dominance, meaning that instead of playing a plain C7 in bars three and four, and just, you know, we've made it dumb simple, instead of going G minor seven, C7, we've been C7, all, C7 only, that's an old bebop trick, right? Just think of the five chord, don't think of the two five. Uh, and what I've done is I sort of put a flat nine or a sharp nine in there without necessarily trying. It's just, this is where the, the line led me, sort of. So I'm gonna touch on this a tiny bit. The two main choices you should look at for your altering your dominance in, in the previous step, number one would be the altered scale. And I'm saying this first because the G7 in the last bar, we played it like this. G, A flat, B flat, B natural, B flat, E flat, F, and this is the altered scale. If you want to look at it another way, it's A flat melodic minor, meaning it's A flat major. But, so it's A flat 
major with a C flat. Yes, it's not a B natural, it's a C flat. It's A flat, B flat, C flat, B flat, A flat, F, G, and A. And that's starting from G, so you get... And that's what we've played uh, in all of the, the scale templates that I've given you. And this is a really good scale to alter because it's it's really bad. It, all the bad boys are in. So you get the flat 9, the sharp 9, the f sharp 5, the flat 5, it's really, really heavy. So one of the tricks I can give you to remember this is if you're familiar with the tritone sub, you know this progression is D minor 7 flat 5 to G7 altered. You can just think of D minor 7 flat 5 to D flat 7 going to your down to your C of some sort. And the D flat 7, you make it mixolydian, sharp 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, sharp 4. That's one neat trick to remember. Uh, the altered scale is just, actually, it's just a tritone sub. So this is one, one really neat way to do it. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this because these videos, they tend to get super lengthy. So you can do your own research and practice these things to make the C7, the B flat 7, the A flat 7, and the G7 make them altered through Solar. And the other solution is to make them, uh, you can use a diminished scale. So if we're, I'm going to look at G7 again because it's it's simple, then it's going down to C, right? So you can play G, A flat. Well, you know the scale problem. Uh, I'm a bit rusty, guys, sorry. Sorry, that's my phone. Hey, the, the altered scale and the diminished scale should give you a good bang for your buck. I'm going to shoot another video. Uh, call back my mom right away. <laughs> I'm going to shoot another video soon about the diminished scale versus other scales. So if you were to just keep your nose to the grindstone for C7, determine what the diminished scale is. For B flat 7, do the same thing. A flat 7, same thing. G7, same thing. And then do this altered as well. That's a total of eight scales you have to memorize and, and look at. And this will prevent you from just sounding very, sounding very bland when you do your dominance improv because dominance have been uh, shown to be uh, uh, to be more interesting when they're altered. So let me just, I'm going to run a course, uh, I'm going to run two courses quickly to show you how intense it can get when you alter your dominance. So let's just do this quickly and move on. Two, go three, four. Then to C7, flat line. That's F major. Do the same for B flat. Again, C7. On B flat. Welcome to the last piece of the puzzle on the Solar Improv side. One I want to talk about now, and you can read this in the blog as well. Uh, it's a fine craft of, we would say, transcend the form. So, of course, when you hear Pat Metheny solo on Solar, or, or on anything for that matter, or you hear the Bill Evans recording and all these guys, it's like the, the form and the chords and the scales are an afterthought. It's like... They, of course it's C7, of course it's this, of course it's that, and then they can take an idea and play the idea. They don't play the scale, they don't play the chords, they don't play the tune, they actually follow through with expressing what they want to express, and um, to some extent the progression of the song like Solar, it becomes an excuse to, to blow, it becomes just like, this is my justification because I, I have... I need to blabber, I need to go blah, 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 and here's the excuse. Oh, it's a 12-bar form, blues, or it's all the things you are, or, or solar, or whatever. So I want to discuss this and to give you an entry point, perhaps, into that world of what I would call a uh, following idea. So I'm going to set the backing track to four. Once again, we'll do one, 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 one. And what I invite you to do is to start with an idea, your improv, while, while we trade here, and to carry this idea forward. And you'll notice that if you have blind spots when it terms in terms of scales and in terms of oh what what's the next chord again 
if you have blind spots, it's going to become impossible to focus on one thing. We're very, very poor multitaskers as human beings. Uh, you can read the studies about this. It's crazy. So if you want to focus on following an idea through, and the idea might be a small melodic uh, motif, it might be a small a little rhythm, it might be anything. But if you want to follow through with it, you have to know how it morphs itself uh, when it goes from chord to chord. So it's all a surprise. So I'm going like boss of the wall, no safety net. There's no second take. You see, you heard my phone ring. I'm just doing this so you guys can get the raw. Like this is as close to a private lesson as you would get. Uh, personally, this is, I think the new formats for the video work really well in that fashion. So let's go and improvise on Solar and stick with one idea and see how it evolves through the form. And never mind try to trying to run the scales or run the arpeggios and whatever. Don't don't do that. Just focus on the idea. And your blind spots will become very apparent. And then you can work on this, shed the scales a little more and then come back to this exercise in a month or six months and notice, oh, wow, I can be more uh, consistent uh, in what I'm saying. I'm not just like, you know, uh, BSing my way by just playing a whole bunch of notes that are right, uh, that fit the scales. I'm actually saying something. So no safety net. Let's just go and do this. You ready? Me first. One, two, three, first. that idea. My turn again. As you can see, it's pretty challenging to keep the focus on what you're saying, on the interval, on the rhythm, on the, on the value of that musical statement, almost like you're talking to someone. Uh, it's hard to keep the interest and to keep you going and still modulate all these chords and changes that are going by. So that's, I guess that's one way to define the craft of jazz improvisation. It's like, you know, you can, <laughs> one of my teachers in college would say, uh, you know, you could swing a baseball bat at this guy and he would still continue thinking of his musical idea. That's how focused, yeah, you need this Pat Metheny volcano focus in one direction to make sure these things uh, carry through. So I have one last thing I want to discuss with Solar and I'm going to let you go. I'll see you there. All right, so to finalize this lesson on Solar, here are a few more things you should be thinking about. So this is YouTube, this is the blog, and we cannot cram everything into one a single lesson. And you're gonna tell me, yeah, Mark, it's just scales, whatever. Yeah, it's scales in context, and there's a, a sort of a historical weight on that tune that you can really take advantage of. So that's my first point, is you should, you guys should seek to run through transcriptions, and I'm, I'm gonna make sure that the blog post has these uh, album covers because they're timeless. So the Miles Davis All Stars, All Stars, All Star, and the Bill Evans Sunday at the Village Vanguard. I believe I think there's even a reissue with an outtake, and the interplay within the trio is fantastic. It's uh, with the late Scott LaFaro, who died, you know, prematurely. That's uh, with Paul Motion on drums. It's one of the greatest, if not the greatest, Bill Evans trio. Uh, then there's Pat Metheny who plays with uh, none other than Roy Haynes and Dave Holland. That's a mid-90s record, I guess. They play all the things you are. They play Solar. They play a whole bunch of records. And that's when Metheny said, you know, just walk into the studio with, you know, my guitar and plug in this amp and just start playing. 
instead of carrying all his gear around and have this whole production, it's like raw trio, let's blow. And the last one is Brad Meldow. Uh, you might get nightmares from listening to this recording because he's going at it in a chaotic yet controlled fashion on Solar. Very interesting. Uh, the few more recommendations I have that I, I couldn't fit in this blog that I'll make right now. The number one is this tune after, I guess, after it was released by Miles Davis, it has been played at all kinds of different tempos. And the tempo that's called at jams, if you go to Montreal, Toronto, whatever, people are going to call it fast. Like, one, two, three. You know, it's it's 200 and more. Uh, be prepared. People, like drummers, they rush at jam sessions, so they start to play faster. And after five sax solos, then it's the guitar solo, and like, ooh, tempo is 300, so you have to prepare. You can prepare in the privacy of your own practice room or studio. You can use a metronome, you can use backing tracks to prepare to play at... 200, 220, 240, etc., or more. And the last point I'm going to make here is this form is so close to the blues form that it's not a bad, bad idea to practice it in all different keys. So you are in the key of one minor, and then you're going to four major, then you're going to the relative major of that one minor, and then a whole step down, and then start over. It's pretty obvious to do it in different keys. If you're a more Intermediate or advanced player, I really recommend you do this. Uh, iReal Pro, which is a software I use for my backing tracks, it has these things where you can you know, increase the tempo at every course or even change the key at every course. So I would recommend you just practice through all the 12 keys because uh, scales are scales and this and that. And when you get back to... <laughs> When you get back to C minor, you're like, oh, just one key, now it's easy, right? All right, so on that note, thanks again. Thanks a lot for watching this YouTube lessons. These YouTube lessons, there's way more where this case came from at jazzguitarlessons.net slash blog. Of course, the motto is jazzguitarlessons.net, improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. That's me. And we have a lot more on store.jazzguitarlessons.net for memberships and courses that are premium. So if you're interested in joining to get more of this, but on a premium fashion, uh, type in jazzguitarlessons.net slash memberships, plural. Uh, meanwhile, uh, please do not forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking here in the little bell. And uh, I'll invite you to continue to browse the lessons and to keep me posted if you have any questions. I'll see you soon in the next video. Take care.